What can you do to keep your boat's batteries in excellent condition? How can you make sure that you get the longest possible calendar life? In this presentation, we're going to look at three different bits of knowledge that you need to take excellent care of your batteries. The main bit of knowledge, the main topic is the depth of discharge. How far can you discharge your batteries before they are damaged by a process called solvatation? Now, once you've discharged your batteries, you have to recharge them. On board you have two different options, typically, which is your ship's alternator, you start the ship's engine, your alternator recharges your batteries, or to use a shore-based powered quality charger to recharge your batteries. Because the main rule is, a healthy battery is a full battery, keep them charged as much as possible. So don't leave them at deep levels of discharge, recharge as soon as you can. The third topic is, what kind of batteries do you have? If you know what kind of batteries you have, you know how to take excellent care of them to make sure that they last as long as possible. Now we're going to start with the third topic. What kind of batteries can you buy at a Vitus point? The SMF battery is a very familiar battery. It's a starter battery. We've designed it so that it can deliver a lot of power almost instantaneously. So with a surprisingly small battery, you can start a large ship's engine. Downside of this battery is if you take a lower lower load for a longer amount of time, the battery is easily damaged. So don't use it to run a refrigerator, your navigation lines or anything else. It is a starter battery meant to deliver a lot of power in a very short time frame. For the luxuries on board or your navigation equipment, we have de developed the AGM battery. AGM stands for absorbed glass moth. So the assets are not uh, sloshing around in that battery, they contain within glass moth and it gives the battery some unique properties. You can discharge them very deeply before they are damaged and you can recharge them enthusiastically as well. You can put a lot of energy back into that battery in a short amount of time. Now, because of the AGM, it's a complex battery to produce. It's a bit more expensive, but if you take good care of an AGM battery, it will last very, very long. So total cost of ownership will be uh, the lowest with an AGM battery. We also have traditional lead acid batteries, the VEDC line. We produce it in one size, which means we can deliver an excellent price quality ratio. This is a lot of money for the battery. You can buy it in 110 amp hours, which is a size that's still relatively easy to carry to your boat and back. One size, but a lot of battery for the money. Now the difference between a starter battery and a deep cycle battery is getting smaller. A starter battery is still a starter battery, but the AGM batteries and the VEDC line, the deep cycle batteries, are now so powerful that they can start a ship's engine. Usually you have to uh, buy them one size bigger than you would a starter engine, but one size larger means it has enough power to start your ship's engine. So if you only have one battery on your boat, say for a fishing boat, you go out, you drop anchor, you start fishing, engine is off, your battery is slowly drained. Now if you do that with a starter battery and you use the starter battery to run uh, the fish tank, to run navigation lines, other luxuries on board, a starter battery can't handle that load, it will be damaged within a couple of hours. It won't even last a couple of seasons because if you discharge it to about 50% it will be damaged. An AGM battery is designed to deliver that prolonged load. So if you have one battery on the boat, buy an AGM, it will last much longer than a starter battery if you also use it for longer, lower loads. Depth of discharge is a deciding factor in how long a battery will last. 100% depth of discharge means that you've taken all of the energy available out of that battery. And if you recycle it immediately, we call that one cycle. So one cycle is discharge and recharge immediately. Don't leave a battery empty or at a deep level of discharge for more than a couple of hours. Now, if you take all of the energy from the battery and you recharge it immediately, a battery can only do that 10, 15 times before you start noticing that its capacity is dropping. It's a process called sulfatation, which happens at 100% depth of discharge. They're basically salt crystals. You can see them on the bottom of, of the picture. And these salt crystals, the sulfate crystals, are no longer part of the chemical process. They won't absorb power, they can't deliver power anymore. Uh, where they're sulfate, that battery is basically dead. So don't discharge a battery too far. If you take slightly less energy from your battery bank, instead of 100%, 75% from available energy, your battery will last 5 to 600 cycles. Now, 5-600 cycles and a normal battery life of about 7-8 years means 50-60 to 60 cycles per season, which is a lot of fun for your boat. 
Now, if you take less energy from your battery, you can do thousands of those cycles. So in real life, this means if you completely drain your batteries every time you go out, it's a good idea to invest in a slightly bigger battery bank. If you go from 95 to 75% depth of discharge, which is only 20% more battery capacity, all of a sudden your batteries will last multiple seasons instead of just one or two seasons. The above only applies for deep cycle batteries, the AGM, the VEDC line. If you do this with a normal starter battery, it will be long gone because of the solvitation process. Don't discharge a deep, uh, sorry, a starter battery for more than 20, maximum 25%. It will be damaged on the inside because of the solvitation. What is a reasonable expected lifetime from your ship's batteries? If we, we at Vetus deliver a thousand batteries, uh, within a month we get one or two batteries back, usually because of transportation uh, damage and very, very rarely because of a production error. Batteries are produced under very, tight circ very tightly controlled circumstances. Production errors are very rare, but they can happen. After three to four months, we get a couple of batteries back, usually because of installation errors. Someone has hooked up all of the power drains, say the refrigerator, navigation equipment, but forgot to hook up the charger. So the battery is now run to 100% empty. It's left there for a couple of days. Battery is damaged by sulfatation, not covered by guarantee. It's basically battery abuse. After one year, we start getting batteries back um, in slightly larger numbers, say three or 4% of those batteries. Usually because they were either overcharged or undercharged because of cheap chargers. A cheap charger gives a set level of voltage and that voltage is either too high overcharging your batteries, which is a process called gassing. A little bit of gassing is normal for a battery, they're designed to handle that, but you don't want to overdo it with a voltage that's too high because you will lose battery capacity. Or the voltage for a cheap charger is too low and the battery is never fully recharged. And a battery that's not completely recharged will lose its capacity as well. Long distance cruisers typically only do one or two years with their battery bank because unfortunately what a lot of sailors do is they go out sailing, which is a wonderful idea, but once they, they wait with you recharging the battery still, equipment on board starts complaining. Typically it's the VHF that sounds an alarm, a low voltage alarm. The engine is started for a couple of hours to recharge the batteries a bit, but basically you're going to 100% depth of discharge, recharge for a couple of hours, which is only 25-30% of energy back into the battery, and then straight back to 100%. Batteries will only survive that for one season, and then they are uh, uh, basically dead. Too much sulfitation in there. Most owners will do four or five years with a battery bank. They recharge whenever possible, do not discharge them too deeply. But we also have a lot of owners who do six, seven, eight, maybe even 10 years with a battery bank, the smart owners. So let's have a look what a smart owner does to get the most from his battery bank, his or her battery bank. Now, a smart owner will install a battery bonding monitor. A battery monitor measures the amount of energy that's left in the battery. If you start at 100%, the battery is completely filled, completely full, very healthy battery. Uh, you go out sailing or you drop anchor, you spend time uh, at, at an anchorage, your battery is now being drained of energy. So the needle will go down 90, 80, 50, 40%. And by the time it gets to 40, 35% energy left, it's time to start thinking on how to recharge the batteries. If you have a motor cruiser, start your engine, Make a nice trip on, uh, with the engine on and your alternator will recharge your batteries. Or spend a night in a marina, hook it up to a shore-based power charger and the charger overnight will completely recharge your batteries. Now what a lot of average owners do, they use a voltmeter to indicate charge level of their batteries. A voltmeter isn't accurate enough to do this. A battery which is warm will give a slightly different voltage than a cold one. If it's uh, under load, it will drop in voltage. Voltmeters give a reasonable indication, but it's not accurate enough to decide when to start recharging. And if you wait for your lights to go dim, you've discharged to 100%, it's definitely time to start charging. So a battery monitor is a, is a good idea. Once you've completely discharged the battery, well, not completely, 75% max, you have to recharge the battery. And the battery has a couple of phases in which it's being recharged. 
Now I'm taking a deeply discharged battery, there's only 25% energy left, so depth of discharge 75%. And to recharge it to 100%, you've got a couple of distinct phases. The main amount of uh, energy is put back into that battery in the bulk phase, which is from 25% up to about 80% charge level. You can put a lot of energy back into that battery in a couple of hours high charge currents, it's not unlimited, but for all practical purposes, whatever you throw at that battery, it's accepted by that battery. At about 80% of charge level, the voltage starts rising. And the higher the voltage is, the more the battery starts gassing. A little bit of gassing is normal, but if it gets excessive, you lose uh, battery capacity, it will lose battery power. So you don't want to overdo the voltage. That typical level is 14 and a half volt, Voltage is limited to 14.5 volt, and in order to do that, you have to lower the amount of energy that's put back into that battery bank. This is called the absorption phase, where you go from 80 to about 95% of energy. It takes, simply takes a lot of time to put that energy back into the battery, because the voltage can't rise too far. From 95 to 100% full, it takes a couple of hours again, otherwise the voltage would get too high. So it will take about 10, 12 hours to completely recharge your battery to 100%. If you start the ship's engine, the bulk phase happens quite rapidly, but once the amp meter starts dropping, your batteries aren't full, they're at about 80%. So how does a smart owner does that, do this? Now step one is he or she uses a high quality charger that has a bulk absorption float phase. Modern chargers now have six, seven, eight different phases to keep your battery in perfect condition and use shore power to do that. If you're on a sailboat and you have to recharge often and uh, a lot, a second alternator on your engine is a very sensible thing to install. It won't completely recharge your batteries, but at least the bulk phase will be a lot shorter because the second alternator will put a lot of energy back into your battery bank. Smart owners also think in winter storage about the self-discharge from batteries. If you uh, leave a battery unconnected, it will still lose a little bit of its power because of internal processes. It's only 2 or 3 percent a month, but after 6-7 months in winter storage, the charge level is dropping. So a smart owner will use a very small charger to keep that battery at 100 percent. Another good idea is to install a battery switch, a main switch, to completely isolate your batteries. If you've left a light bulb on or the refrigerator is still running, the battery will be completely drained of its energy and losing its capacity very, very quickly. A simple battery switch makes sure that you've switched off all of the loads on the battery, so it will stay full a lot longer. Now, the average owner trusts the ship's alternator to recharge the batteries, but they will never get completely full. They will only be recharged till about 80 or 90%. So what is a quality charger? I've put two on the screen. A good charger will use the bulk absorption and float phase and even more phases to keep your battery in perfect condition. Now the big one on the bottom is meant for sailboats or motor cruisers who arrive in the marina with their batteries empty or almost empty. You need a powerful charger to get a lot of energy back into that battery. The small charger also has a bulk absorption and float phase and it's meant to keep full batteries completely full. So if you have a motor cruiser, long hours on the engine, if you come back into the marina, a small charger will make sure that your batteries stay in perfect condition. Now if you install a high power charger, also install a temperature gauge. It's the one uh, on the right hand side, it's a small temperature sensor, sensor which you hook up to a battery terminal and your charger now takes into account the temperature of your batteries that they don't rise too far. Um, it, will take, uh, it will deliver about one additional season on your boat's batteries if you keep the temperature slightly lower. Solar panels are an absolute wonderful way to keep batteries topped up. If you don't have access to shore power, uh, pho photovoltaic panels, solar panels are a great way to keep your batteries full. You won't be able to completely recharge your batteries, but a solar panel will keep them, will keep full batteries full, but make sure that you set the charger to the correct voltage. What we see a lot is that solar panels, the voltage is too high, overloading the uh, ship's batteries, which will limit their lifetime. If you use the engine to recharge your batteries, 
Engines typically only uh, use the bulk phase of batteries. You start the ship's engine, now the amp needle is now at 30, maybe 40 amps, a lot of power going back into the battery, and you can see the voltmeter slowly going up. And once the voltmeter reaches about 14 and a half volt, your alternator is reducing the amount of power going to the battery to prevent gassing, and your amp needle goes down as a result of that. So your ship's alternator won't overcharge your batteries, but it will only use the bulk phase, the amp meter will go down. Most owners now say, oh my batteries are full, but you're at about 80% of charge. You need an additional 3-4 hours on engine to get your batteries up to about 90-95% of charge. Of course, the more you recharge your battery, the better it is, but keep in mind that if the amp meter drops, you're about 80% of charge. And especially for sailboats, typically with small engines, it takes a lot of engine hours to completely recharge your batteries. What does a good installation on board uh, entail? Now, use a battery monitor or at least a voltmeter. voltmeter. Don't uh, wait with charging until your lights go dim. Install a quality charger and a temperature sensor on one of the battery terminals. And use a battery uh, separator. On a lot of boats we still see the old-fashioned round switches. If you start the engine you have to manually select battery 1, 2 or both to recharge. Now if you forget to, turn the, to get the switch in the correct position, your batteries are either not charged or completely discharged, damaging them. And a simple battery separator will do that automatically for you. It will recharge the battery which is the emptiest. And again, a main switch is a great way to make sure that you don't accidentally completely drain your batteries when you're not on board. If it's time to buy a new battery bank, don't mix different kinds of batteries in one battery bank. If you replace one battery, replace all of the batteries from the same bank. If you have one battery lowering in capacity, which is uh, prematurely uh, losing its capacity, it will also influence the healthy batteries. So if you only replace one battery, uh, <clears throat> that new battery will be degraded very rapidly by the older batteries. So exactly the same age, exactly the same capacity, the same history. Install batteries as cold as possible. Every 10 degrees up will cost you about one season of lifetime from your boat's batteries. So if they are near the engine bay and the engine is radiating heat towards your battery bank, get a shield in between, make a separate battery box with some ventilation to the outside, keep battery temperature as low as possible. Vibrations also have an impact, so if they are close to your engine, try to uh, install them on a rubber mat so they don't vibrate with the ship's uh, vibrations, with the engine's vibrations. If you go to the bigger ba battery banks, um, spend some time learning about cable management. You want every battery in that bank to have exactly the same voltage, exactly the same charge, and with some simple steps you can make sure that every battery has the same charge level. And again, main switches are a wonderful way to insulate your battery bank. So, to conclude our session, we've discussed depth of, dis depth of discharge, why is it important to not completely discharge your batteries, your options to recharge, again, your alternator will charge to about 80%, but a shore-based charger, well, shore-based power charger will recharge to 100%, and we've discussed the different batteries that VETA supplies. I would like to thank you for your time and attention, and I wish you a lot of very enjoyable boating seasons.